Hello! Hello, welcome back! I'm Sergio, and today we're starting our class with a new subject. We're going to have two videos related to relative clauses, so let's start with the first part. Welcome back! Let me know if you have any comments or questions. Okay, good! So, Today, we're starting with the topic of relative clauses. What are we going to learn today? What is the objective of this video? Well, first, we're going to learn what are relative pronouns and what are relative clauses. We are also going to learn what are the two types of relative clauses. We have defining relative clauses and we have non-defining relative clauses, but we're going to see what non-defining relative clauses are in the next video. In this video, we're only going to learn the two types of defining relative clauses. So that's what we're going to do and I hope you enjoy it. Remember to write down your questions and your comments. So let's start. First, I have a question for you. I know you know the answer to this question because I have been asking you this since the beginning of the semester. So, what is a clause? Do you remember what a clause is? All right, a clause is a piece of a sentence. A clause contains subject, verb, and complement. You already know this, but this is important that you remember it because we're going to be working with clauses during the entire video. And what is the objective of this unit? What are we going to do? You're going to learn to connect clauses using relative pronouns. So you know what a clause is, you're going to learn what a relative clause is, and you're going to use six different relative pronouns. The relative pronouns that we're learning for class are that, who, whose, which, where, and when. Remember that we use that for people or things. We use who for people. We use whose when we have a possessive adjective. We use which for things. We use where for places. And we use when when we talk about the time. So remember, what are we going to do? We're going to connect, we're going to learn how to connect clauses using relative pronouns. And those relative pronouns that we're going to use are that, who, whose, which, where, and when. Good. So let me show you my neighborhood. This is where I live. These are some houses where some people live that are close to me. And yesterday... I met this lady, I saw her down the street, and we had some conversation and I discovered that she actually lives in the house next door. So she is my neighbor, and this is what she said when we two met. Hello, neighbor, nice to meet you. I'm Susan, so this is lovely Susan, it's a very nice woman. And we're going to use Susan as an example to learn how to connect clauses. First, we have two clauses. I met a woman, I met Susan, and Susan lives next door, or I met a woman, a woman lives next door. So what are we going to do? We're going to connect these two clauses using a relative pronoun. I'm going to show you how the relative pronouns work. So. Let's start with the first sentence. Which one is the subject of the sentence? The subject of the sentence is I. Which one is the verb? The verb is met. And which one is the object of the verb? A woman. Let's go with the second sentence. Which one is the subject of the sentence? A woman. And the verb is leaves. And where does the woman lives while she lives next door. So, what do you think is going to be the result if we connect those two sentences using a relative pronoun? Well, this is the result. I met a woman who lives next door. What did I do? Well, I used a relative pronoun to replace the noun that is repeated in the two clauses. So I used who to replace the 
object of the verb in the first clause and the subject of the verb in the second clause. Who, that is replacing a woman, is the relative pronoun. Who is the relative pronoun that we use to replace the woman and the woman is the noun that the two clauses have in common. And what is a relative clause? Well, the relative clause is the sentence, the piece of sentence, the clause, that starts with a relative pronoun. So remember, who, in this case, is the relative pronoun, and the relative clause is the piece of sentence that starts with a relative pronoun. Good, so what is a clause? A clause is a piece of a sentence. What is a relative clause? A relative clause. It's also a piece of a sentence, but it's a piece of a sentence that starts with a relative pronoun. What is the use of relative clauses? Well, a relative clause gives us more information about the nouns, the subject or the object of a sentence. Let me show you two examples of relative pronoun. Let me give you two examples of sentences. Let's see this one. I have two clauses as well. I bought a new car, that is the first clause, and I want to connect that sentence with this another clause. The car is very fast. So when I connect them together, I have a clause that says this. I bought a new car. That is very fast. When I connect those two first clauses, I get a sentence that has a relative pronoun and a relative clause. Let me show you the second example. She lives in New York. And the second clause is, she likes New York. I have two clauses, two clauses that are different, but have something in common. What they have in common is, New York. So I'm going to use a relative pronoun to replace one of the New Yorks and to connect the two sentences. So the result is she lives in New York, which she likes. So in this case, one question. In the first sentence, I bought a new car that is very fast. Which one is the relative pronoun? And in the second sentence, she lives in New York, which she likes. Which one is the relative pronoun? Well, in the first sentence, the relative pronoun is that. And in the second sentence, the relative pronoun is which. We use that not to repeat car, and we use which not to repeat New York. So that one is the relative pronoun, and Remember, this is the relative clause. The relative clause is the piece of a sentence that starts with a relative pronoun. That and which, in these two examples, are the relative pronouns. Good. So, those are relative clauses. Relative clauses are pieces of sentences that are in a sentence that start with a relative pronoun. And we have two types of relative clauses. We have defining relative clauses and non-defining relative clauses. This video is only related to defining relative clauses and the next video that I'm going to show you is related to non-defining relative clauses. So let's see the difference between what a defining relative clause is and a non-defining relative clause is. One, a defining relative clause tells which noun we are talking about. I met a woman who lives next door. If I don't say who lives next door, then we don't know which woman I mean. I use the relative clause to talk exactly or to say exactly which noun I'm talking about. Defining relative clauses gives us information that is essential, information that is necessary. So a defining relative clause helps us know which woman, in the case of this sentence, I mean. A non-defining relative clause gives us extra information about a noun. 
We don't need this information to understand the sentence. So let's see the example. I live in London, which has some fantastic parks. I know where I live, and I know what London is, so which has some fantastic parks is extra information. Defining relative clauses, we use them to know exactly which one is the noun we're talking about, but in non-defining clauses, we use them as extra information. So, defining relative clauses are clauses that are necessary, but non-defining relative clauses provide us or give us extra information. That is the difference. Remember that this video is only related to defining relative clauses, but the next video is related to non-defining relative clauses. Let's start with defining relative clauses. We have two types of defining relative clauses. Don't worry, I know this looks like a lot of information, but we're going to see some examples and you're going to see how this is going to be very, actually quite easy. It's not as complicated as it looks because what you're going to do is only connect sentences using the relative pronouns and relative clauses. So, but let's see what are the two types of defining relative clauses. In the first type of re defining relative clauses, the relative pronoun is the subject of the verb in the relative clause. And in the second type of relative, of relative clauses, of defining relative clauses, the relative pronoun is the object of the verb in the relative clause. When the relative pronoun is the subject of, defined, of a defining relative clause, we can use who, which, or that, and when and where and whose. We use who for people and which for the things. We can use that for people or the things. The relative clause can come after the subject or the object of the sentence. And in this case, we can't drop. We cannot remove the relative pronoun. We need to use it. This is the first type. Now let's see the examples. We have Examples of sentences, and each example has two clauses. I'm looking, let's see the first one. I'm looking for a secretary, and a secretary can use a computer well. Which one is the subject of the first clause? I. And the verb is I'm looking, and the object will be well, what I'm looking for is a secretary. And the subject of the second clause is a secretary and the verb is can. What happens if we connect those two sentences? I'm looking for a secretary who or that can use a computer well. In this case, we can use who or we can use that. So, which one is the relative pronoun? The relative pronoun is who or that. And which one is the relative clause? The relative clause is who or that can use a computer well. In this case, who or that, the relative pronoun, is the subject of the relative clause. Who can use a computer well? Well, who is replacing the secretary and is the subject of the relative clause. Let's see the second example. She has a son, and we're going to connect that clause with her son is a doctor. Can you try to connect it? She has a son, plus her son is a doctor. We don't want to connect those two sentences together. She has a son who or that is a doctor. I use who or that to replace the subject of the relative clause. Who or that is the subject of the relative clause? Is it the beginning? Is before the verb? That's how we know that that is the subject of the relative clause. The relative pronoun is who or that, and that is 
the subject of the relative clause. Let's see the next example. We bought a house. The house is 200 years old. So let's connect them. Let's link them. We bought a house. Which or that is 200 years old? Which one is the relative pronoun? Which or that? And which one is the relative clause? The relative clause is which is 200 years old or that is 200 years old. In this case, which or that is replacing the house and the house is the subject of the relative clause. I send the letter plus the letter arrived three weeks later. I send a letter which or that arrived three weeks later. Which one is the relative pronoun? The relative pronoun is which or that and the relative pronouns which or that that is replacing a letter is the subject of the verb in the relative clause. Which arrived three weeks later. A man phoned. The man is my brother. Let's connect it. The man who phoned is my brother. Or the man that phoned is my brother. Which one is the relative clause? Who or that? And in this case, which one is the relative clause? The relative clause is who phoned is my brother, or that phone is my brother. The relative pronoun in this case is who or that is the subject of the sentence. Let me show you these two sentences. The camera which cost a hundred pounds is over there. The house which or that belongs to Julie is in London. Can you tell me which ones are the relative pronouns in these two sentences? Well, the relative pronoun in the first sentence is which or that, and the relative pronoun in the second sentence is also which or that. In the first sentence, which one is the relative clause? The relative clause is which costs a hundred pounds. So, can you separate that sentence into two different clauses? Can we do the opposite procedure? The camera costs a hundred pounds. The camera is over there. In this case, we use the relative pronoun which or that to replace the camera. And in this case, which or that, the relative pronoun, is also the subject of the sentence. Let's see the next sentence. The house which belongs to Julie is in London. Can you separate those two st that sentence into two different classes? The house belongs to Julie and the house is in London. We use the relative pronoun to replace the house and the house is the subject of the relative clause. Remember, these are defining relative clauses because in all of these sentences, the information included in the relative clause is necessary. Okay, let's go with the second type of relative clauses. In the second type of, rel of defining relative clauses, the pronoun is the object of the relative clause. These are some special relative clauses because in this case, we can drop the relative pronoun. In this case, the relative pronoun is optional. When the relative pronoun is the object of the relative clause, we can drop the relative pronoun if we want to, so it's optional. The relative pronoun is not necessary, and the relative clause can come after the subject of the object of the sentence. So let's see some example of the second type of relative clauses. What are we going to do? Same thing that we've been doing, we're going to connect those sentences. Clause after the object of the sentence. She loves chocolate. That is the first clause. I bought the chocolate. 
Can we connect them? Let's see what happens when we connect those two clauses. She loves the chocolate wheat or that I bought. She loves the chocolate which or that I bought. In this case, which one is the relative pronoun? The relative pronoun is which or that. And the relative, pron and the relative clause is which I bought. What's special about this? Well, look, I bought the chocolate. We use the relative pronoun to replace the chocolate, but in this case, the chocolate is the object of the verb boat. And in this case, we can remove the relative pronoun. She loves the chocolate. I boat. Because the relative pronoun is replacing the object of the verb in the relative clause, I can remove it. It's optional. Let's see the second example. We went to a bar. Lucy recommended a bar. Can we connect those two sentences? We went to a bar which Lucy recommended. In this case, we use the relative pronoun which to replace the object of the verb in the relative clause. Lucy recommended. What did Lucy recommend? A bar. So we went to a bar. Lucy recommended. We went to a bar that Lucy recommended. In this case, the relative pronoun is optional. John met a woman. I admire the woman. Can we connect them? John met a woman. Who that I admire. John met a woman who I admire. In this case, the relative pronoun who is replacing the object of the verb in the relative clause. Who is replacing the woman and the woman is the object of the verb admire. That means that you can Remove it. You can rub it. It's optional. Let's see this sentence. The police arrested a person who or that Jill worked with. Let's do the opposite procedure. Let's separate that sentence into two different clauses. The first one, the police arrested a person. And the second one, Jill worked with a person. In this case, the person is replaced by the relative pronoun and the person is the object of the verb and the preposition. That means that you can actually remove it. In this case, you can say the police arrested a person Jill worked with because the relative pronoun is replacing the object of the verb. That means that you can remove it, that the relative pronoun is optional. Good, let's go with the sentences in which the clause, the relative clause, is, goes after the subject. I loved a bike. The bike was stolen. So we connect them and it says, the bike, which that I love was stolen. Which one is? The relative pronoun, the, which, the relative pronoun is which or that. And which one is the relative clause? The relative clause is which I loved or that I loved. And in this case, which I loved is talking about the subject of the first clause. The bike which I loved was stolen. And in this case, because the bike was stolen and because the bike is the object of the verb love we can remove the relative pronoun the bike i loved was stolen she likes the university plus we're going to connect it with the university is famous what happens if we connect it what is common between the two sentences? We're going to use a relative pronoun to replace the university. 
the university which or that she likes is famous. Which one is the relative pronoun? The relative pronoun is which and that. And which one is the relative clause? Which she likes, that she likes. And the relative clause in this case is referring to the object of the first clause so we can remove it. The university she likes is famous. My brother loves a woman. The woman is from Mexico. We're going to connect those two sentences. My brother loves a woman and the woman is from Mexico. Bam, 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 bam. The woman who my brother loves is from Mexico or the woman that my brother loves is from Mexico. Which one is the relative pronoun? The relative pronoun is who or that. And which one is the relative clause? The relative clause is who or that my brother loves. And the relative clause is referring to the subject of the sentence, but in this case, the subject of the relative clause is the object of the verb. My brother loves a woman. We are using who or that to replace the woman. And the woman is the object of the verb love. Let's see the last one. My grandmother liked a doctor and the doctor lives in New York. Can we connect those two sentences? Let's see what happens. The doctor, who or that, my grandmother liked, lives in New York. Which one is the relative pronoun? The relative pronoun is who or that. And which one is the relative clause? The relative clause is who my grandmother liked or that my grandmother liked. In this case, who or that, the relative pronoun, is replacing the doctor and the doctor is the object of the verb liked. So, in this case, the relative pronoun is also optional. The doctor my grandmother liked lives in New York. So, these are the two types of de defining relative clauses. But now we're going to go to the book on page 55. Last class, we worked with the vocabulary. Remember that we talked about character traits in class. But now we're going to go with the exercises from the book, from page 55 in the book. The book only talks about defining relative clauses. So we, let's see what they tell us. Defining relative clauses supply essential information about a noun. They answer the question, what kind or which ones? We use the pronouns who or that for people and use which or that for things. The, let's see the first example. The achiever is a person who or that wants success. So this is a sentence. What do you think are the two clauses that make this sentence? Let's see. The first clause is the achiever is a person and the second clause is the achiever wants success. So, when we combine them, when we connect them, we use the relative pronouns who or that to replace the achiever. The peacemaker dislikes situations which that create conflict. The peacemakers that like situation which that create conflict. Can we separate that sentence into two different clauses? The peacemaker dislikes situations and situations create conflict. What happens when we want to replace situations with a relative pronoun? Well, the peacemakers dislike situations which create conflict. The relative pronoun is which or that and the relative clause is which create conflict. Let's see, let's go with the next one. The relative pronouns are optional when they are the object of the relative clause. This is exactly what I was telling you about. 
The relative pronouns are optional when they are the object of the relative clause. This is the second type of no of defining relative clauses. Let's see the loyalist. The loyalist is a, a type of personality that's in the book. The loyalist is someone who or that people can trust. Can we separate that sentence into two different sentences? Well, the loyalist is someone and the second sentence is people can trust someone. So, the loyalist is someone who or that people can trust. In this case, who or that is replacing someone and someone is the object of the verb. People can trust someone. The challenger makes decisions which or that other people find difficult to make. Can you separate that sentence into two different classes? Let's see how it goes. The challenger makes decisions other people find difficult to make decisions. Right? So, we use the relative pronoun which or that to replace decisions. But in this case, decisions is the object of the relative clause. Other people find difficult to make decisions. Let's go with the exercises. Let's do the exercises. Complete the sentences with who or which. Number one. My sister has a rebellious side. Which or that my parents never see. In this case, we use which to replace what? We use which to replace a rebellious side. Can we remove or is the relative pronoun optional in this case? Let's separate the sentences. My sister has a rebellious side. My, my parents never see my sister's rebellious side. So in this case, the relative pronoun is optional. My sister has a rebellious side. My parents never see. I like friends who or that are easygoing and loyal. I like friends who are easygoing and loyal. In this case, is the relative pronoun optional? Let's separate the two sentences. I like friends. Friends are easygoing and loyal. So can we remove or is the relative pronoun optional? No, because in this case, we are using who or that to replace Friends. And friends is the subject of the sentence. Number three. I hardly ever do things which or that are spontaneous. Is the relative pronoun optional? I hardly ever do things which or that are spontaneous. Let's separate that sentence into two sentences. I hardly ever do things Things are spontaneous. So, the relative pronoun is not optional. Why? Because the relative pronoun is replacing things and things is the subject of the relative clause. Number four. I have idealistic views some people can understand. So, I have idealistic views which or that some people can understand. Is the relative pronoun optional? Let's separate the sentences. I have idealistic views. Some people can't understand my idealistic views. So in this case, the relative pronoun which or that is replacing the idealistic views that in this case is the object of the verb in the relative pronoun. Let's go with the next one. I was a studious child who or that was also very energetic. 
Is the relative pronoun optional? Let's separate the sentences. I was a studious child. I was also very energetic. So, the relative pronoun in this case is not optional because the relative pronoun is replacing the subject of the relative clause. And the last one, number six. My brother is a person who would that other people find competitive. Is the relative pronoun optional? My brother is a person. And the next clause is other people find my brother competitive. So in this case, the relative pronoun who is replacing my brother and my brother is the object of the verb find. All right. Cross out exercise B. Cross out who, which, or that when it's optional. Let's see these sentences and let's see if the relative pronouns are optional. I'm the kind of person that other people think is very logical about things. So if we separate the sentences we have, I'm a kind of person other people think the person is very logical about things. So in this case, that is replacing person, which is the object of the verb, so you can remove it. The relative pronoun is optional. Let's go with number two. I can make decisions that others find difficult to make. Let's separate the sentences. I can make decision is the first clause. Others find difficult to make decisions. So in this case, that is replacing decisions, and decisions is the object of the verb make. So in this case, the relative pronoun is optional. Number three, do you think you have any personality traits which people dislike? Let's see if the relative pronoun is optional. You have any personality traits is the first one. People dislike your personality traits. So, in this case, the relative pronoun is optional because which is replacing the object of the verb dislike in the relative clause. Let's go with the next one, number four. What would be a good job for someone who is independent and responsible? Let's see what are the two clauses that compound this sentence. What would be a good job for someone? Someone is independent and responsible. What would be a good job for someone is the first clause. Someone is independent and responsible. So we are using who to replace someone and in this case, someone is the subject of the relative clause, so the relative pronoun is not optional and you have to keep it. I've sent you this form into your email. And I've, I think I've sent it already. I'm going to send it to teams or I'm going to upload it in Moodle, you're going to have it. This form has two pages. The first page is, uh, there are five questions, four questions. The first is, what is a clause? You know what that is. What is a relative clause? What is a relative pronoun? And what are the relative pronouns that we are learning for class? So the idea is for you to use this page as a review. Answer the first question and then, could you please Watch this video again and find examples of the two types of defining relative clauses. So, what are you going to do? You're going to go through the video again. You're going to watch the video again and you're going to write the examples of defining relative clauses of the first type here and you're going to write defining relative clauses of the second type here. Remember, the first type of relative clauses is when the relative pronoun is the subject of the relative clause. 
And the second type of relative clause is when the relative pronoun is the object of the relative clause and in this case you can remove the relative pronoun. So you're going to watch the video again and you're going to write examples of defining relative clauses here of the first type and then you're going to write examples of relative pronouns of the second type and you're going to write your examples here. These other two types of relative clauses, the non-defining relative clauses, are going to be in the, in the next video. Good! So I hope that you understood what we're talking about when we talk about clauses, when we talk about relative pronouns, and when we talk about relative clauses. Remember, you need to write examples of defining relative clauses of the first type and defining relative clauses of the second type. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if you have some comments. And get ready to do some exercises with me next class. See you next class. And enjoy your week or your weekend. Bye-bye.